Hello, fellow detectives. Welcome to Unlocked, the official podcast for all things Nancy Drew by Her Interactive. I am your host, Tammy Tucky, and this week we welcome actor Josh Flitter to the show. Welcome, Josh. Hello. Thanks for having me. Thank I'm, you so much for letting me do this. Oh, what are you? Well, it's kind of deja vu. I'm I'm transporting myself back to 2007, and I think I was in middle school. I think it was like in sixth grade, and I was it was like a girls' day out with my mom, some friends, my sister, and we all went to see Nancy Drew, starring Emma Roberts, and yourself, of course. So I didn't I'm realize like, we're the we're about the same age. I didn't realize that. Yes, we. I think yeah. we're we're both twenty. 23 24 i'm 24 i'll be 25 in august but i had no idea how old were you when you were in the film i was 12 i did it uh yeah i was 12 years old 12 or th- yes yeah, 2007 2006 was when we filmed it so i was 12 i was born in 94 yeah i just had to do some math in my head <laughs> as quirky and i'm like when i was watching it again this morning i i was i just thought this is how like a regular kid who's twelve years old um, looks and sounds and acts like it. It just made me laugh so hard because I'm like, you know, it, it's it's so fun to watch and and I just am reminded of that day going to see it and we had a ball because it was it was really cool because I, as I told you off the air, I was introduced to the games of Nancy. I didn't know really who she was till I started playing the games in the '90s and um, and then the movie was going to come out and we were like we gotta go see this <laughs> <laughs> well thank you so much for going to see it and enjoying it it was uh it really was a blast to make and um yeah i just had the best time and and i was able to one of the great things about it was i was able to like have the freedom to kind of they, they let us all kind of t- play our own characters like they let us be uh except for emma who had to play the kind of old-fashioned nancy character as in like the 2000s it was a very weird kind of take but i i loved it i thought it turned out great but how she was very classy and she wore the loafers and everything but it, it the idea was they were like throwing her into los angeles that was you know everything was very <laughs> modern but for you know for a character like me they let me just kind of have fun with the role and be myself which was so much fun i love how it offset nancy from la and i was like that is so I, it, it was unusual, but it works. You know what I mean? Like, and I just thought so much fun. And then I was like, she has, she must have OCD because her, I was looking at her prepping her lunch and I'm like, that's exactly what I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, she's what in like, the world? <laughs> yeah. I just diagnosed her. You were like, oh, she's got, she's got OCD because I have OCD. <laughs> I was like, that's exactly how, like, I couldn't be able to eat my food if it was all over the place, like a regular lunchroom. I was unusual myself, so I really always connected with Nancy being, like, not technically the outcast, but just placed in a different, um, I guess, I guess era <laughs> than you really yeah. think you're supposed to be born in, but it works for her, and she doesn't let it bring her down. So I always thought that was great, and I think a lot of fans were excited that Nancy was coming back into the spotlight, mainly with the film. So when did did they say anything did they say anything specific during auditions or when they were working on the casting process of this like w- who the character was did you look into it so my uh the way that i got the role was was quite interesting it was it was very bizarre uh i don't i honestly don't remember every detail but i don't believe i think i auditioned for it like one time because the I had done a movie called The Greatest Game Ever Played, which was uh, a movie about the 1913 U.S. Open that was with uh, Shia LaBeouf and it was directed by Bill Paxton. And I played kind of this little man character in it. He was 10 years old, which I was 10 years old. But I had this kind of like swagger to me. And um, I believe it was through that. And then I was on Jay Leno promoting that movie. And I had just a lot of character and Jerry Wantraub, who is uh, he passed away a couple years ago, I believe now, uh, was one of the producers of Nancy Drew and one of the most successful, prolific producers of all time in Hollywood. Um, he uh, 
produced and I think co-created like the Karate Kid movies and the Oceans 11, 12, 13 movies. And he's just, he was around forever. Um, he saw me on uh, Jay Leno, I think it was, and was like, I want this kid in this movie. And they had originally written the part that I auditioned for, or Corky, to be kind of older and like nerdier. And after he watched me, he was like, I want this kid. And then when I auditioned for it, I'm pretty sure the part was like rewritten. So that way I could be in it. <laughs> um, so uh, that was how I ended up being in it. So I didn't really know much about the Nancy Drew, like, uh, lore. Like, I don't know. I didn't know anything about any of the books. I just kind of growing up, I knew there was like Nancy Drew and the Hardy Boys. And uh, when you were a little kid, it was like, oh, boys would read the Hardy Boys and girls would read Nancy Drew. And I just kind of I would read Captain Underpants because I was an immature child. Um, <laughs> but I didn't know much about Nancy Drew. And then uh, I got the part and I read the script and I was like, I just knew she was like a detective and I was like, this is really fun. And my part kind of had nothing to do with any of the books though. It was just letting me kind of go crazy in, uh, in this world of Nancy Drew. <laughs> I, Emma, uh, who is a delight. She, um, there was, it was really funny. We were filming during Valentine's day and, uh, she was like bugging me like, Oh, be my Valentine, Josh, be my Valentine. And I was like 12. And I like I liked girls, but I was like, for some reason, I was like, no, Emma, I don't want I don't want to be your belt. And she was doing it as like, you know, just to like kind of mess with me. But uh, at the whole time, I was like, no, 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 no. And now looking back on it, I'm like, I'm an idiot. She's beautiful. I totally should have been like, yeah, duh. Um, but yeah, we were just having a lot of fun filming it. We we all became pretty good friends when we were when we were filming it. And uh, very funny, very ironically, like two days ago, one of my good friends just booked a role on SEAL Team, uh, which is the show on CBS that Max Theriot is in, who played Ned. And I haven't spoken to Max in like fifteen or no, not fifteen years, like ten years. And um, my buddy. I just met him yesterday. I was like, dude, you got to tell him I said hi. And he texted me saying like, oh, he said, what up? How are you? You know, have you been? So I just had a, sort of a little Nancy Drew reunion like yesterday, uh, which is fun. Oh, that's so sweet. You know, yeah. I was wondering if you all had kept in touch since since making the movie, because I guess like this is kind of unusual in that sense that everybody who was cast in it was their age, <laughs> the age of the character that they're supposed to play, which I always thought was very nice. Um, yeah. So so you, you guys have stayed in touch over the years? Like, what's that communication like now? Well, it was difficult for me because I was the youngest. So Emma was 15 and I think Max was 17 or 18. And I was like 12. So I was still, even though everyone was really, we were all friendly, I was still like the littler kid. Um, so I didn't, I don't think I even had a cell phone. So it was one of those things that like we didn't, there was no Instagram, there was no Facebook. So if you didn't get each other's like cell phone numbers and text each other all the time, you didn't really stay in touch. So uh, we kind of, the next year, we, we would stay in touch a little bit, and then the next year we had the premiere, and we would do press junkets together, so we all stayed in touch then, but then as the years went by, I at least didn't really talk to any of them. And then um, Emma and I had a reunion. I don't know if you saw this. This this went like little viral uh, a couple years ago. Um, I'm good. One of my good friends, uh, Abigail Breslin, who is on Scream Queens, um, I visited her in LA and Scream Queens was Abigail and Emma. And I was like, holy crap, I'm going to get to see Emma for the first time in, in, it was 10 years. And, uh, she was like, I, I didn't tell her, I, Abby didn't tell her I was coming and she, I, the shock on her face was like, what? Um, and, uh, she gave me this huge hug and we caught up and, uh, we exchanged information and, um, we took uh, like pictures together and she posted them on Instagram and then like people magazine posted it and all these things, uh, reposted it. And she got like 600 or 700,000 likes on the picture. And it just showed that there was this cult following of Nancy drew that really still cared about that movie. I, there really is this cult following for that 2007, 
version of the movie that absolutely adores it. And and I am really into it. I love the fact that there's still people who that's that's how I get recognized the most today is people who still that are it would be people like you who are like girls around my age that I'll meet and they'll go, you look so familiar. Why do you look familiar? And then we get to talking and then I'll end up saying that. And they're like, oh my God, that was like my favorite movie when I was like 12, 13 years old. Um, so I know I've just gotten a, a little off track there, but um, yeah, we we're, now we get to keep in touch a little more. We'll, you know, I send something to each other on Instagram or we'll like each other's pictures on Instagram. And um, but Max, I would love to catch up with. I'm 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 hoping my buddy Luca gets us in touch because I, I want to say hi to him because he and I uh, I really looked up to him on set because he was like the 17 year old guy and I was the 12 year old guy or boy and I was like this guy's so cool. Um, so he like, you know, for the two months, it was like this older brother kind of thing where I thought he was the coolest guy. So I'd love to be able to see him and talk to him again. When you mentioned like the phones texting and everything, I watching the film, there's AOL, there's Puffy Yami Yumi, there is AIM. I'm just in yep. the sidekicks. I'm like, the sidekicks, oh. the sidekicks. <laughs> so the sidekicks were a thing because one, they were just a huge thing at the time. Yes. But Daniela Monet had one in real life and i who played my older sister uh oh, what was her name in the movie oh gosh uh, i'm blanking on that <laughs> my, my no it's funny because my last name in the movie was weinstein uh and it was corky weinstein and i can't remember her name but daniela had a sidekick i think everyone did i think yeah that Emma was did. the it thing was like the phone to have and i was so jealous because either I didn't have a phone or my mom and dad would only let me get like a flip phone because I was like 12 and they were like, you don't need a sidekick. And I was like, all the cool kids have sidekicks. I want a sidekick. And um, <laughs> I remember them all having sidekicks and me being so jealous and wanting one because it was like, if the Aww. cool older kids have them, then I want one. Um, Did you have a, like yeah. a Nintendo DS instead or yeah, a Game it's Boy? It's funny you say that. I bought a Nintendo DS while you were while we were filming the movie, and I <laughs> know exactly when and where I bought it because it was at uh, Universal City Walk, and I bought it that day. And I was playing. It came with uh, Mario, the Super Mario game, like Super Mario sixty four, but remade for the DS or whatever it was. And I was obsessed with the Nintendo DS. So anyway, that's my story. We filmed it in 2006, so it's been 13 years. Jeez. Oh, yeah. jeez. I feel old now. <laughs> I feel, trust me, I feel... When you, when you started this by saying, let's take a time machine and go back, I was like, yes, please. <laughs> yeah, it was so much easier than you didn't have like all the social media, but you yeah. had all the fun of it. I, you know, Because I think about the sidekicks and the razors, and it just throws mm -hmm. me back to like such a great time where... We were just having fun and you well, know, enjoying... social media. It's it's crazy. It's interesting that you bring that up because yeah. social media, I think, is one of the reasons why I'm no longer I quote unquote famous because uh, quote unquote famous because if I social media kind of changed the game for these kid actors, because if they nowadays, if you're on a popular TV show or a movie people follow you and then you book more things because you're being followed. You have a big, you're more, you're fan more famous. Yes. Yeah. You're a bigger fan base. So I missed the social media boat when I did all those movies because they hadn't come out like Twitter, Twitter, like barely come out. Instagram wasn't a thing. Uh, Facebook wasn't a social media platform. It was just like an address book. So you had like a YouTube channel, but I didn't really make, I made like a couple videos, but they didn't really do anything. And then it just kind of fizzled out. So it's kind of like a blessing and a curse because, you know, if I, if it, if it all happened now, I'd probably be constantly working, which I miss and I'd love to be working all the time. Um, but at the same time, embarrassing. <laughs> it, yeah. You know, it, the stuff that you post, I, I'm embarrassed. I am nervous that I, posted something stupid when i was like 17 that i have to go back and look for it is one of those things where it does time stamp when the film was made but it's not in a bad way because then you know it i feel like it might just pull it back to what life might have been like because i guess the whole movie wouldn't have worked if they had social media exactly like they did today there would be no yeah. way to you know to to kind well, of compensate for that i guess yeah, like you said before, it was such a wonderful time to reflect back on. Those mid-2000s, those mid-2000 like 2000 to 2010 were just so incredibly weird. 
yes. and fun. <laughs> it was like we were all wearing like baggy clothes it was just such a and like technology was starting to boom and we were all growing with it especially people like me and you who are this age i genuinely believe that people who are our age i would say because my older brother is 27 gonna be 28 and it's just me and him and in my family we have no other siblings and i genuinely believe that it's like there's like a special period between like 1990 and in like 1998 that understands things differently because we know what it's like to have like dial up internet and not have like cell phones in our hands that had everything. Mm -hmm. But at the same time we got that stuff when we were like 13, 14, 15, 16. So we grew up with it. So we kind of understand, have you ever seen, you know, like a, a 12 year old now try to have a conversation with an adult the adult has no idea what the heck they're talking about because they've grown up on the internet. But we, we like, had the best of both like, worlds. Like we right, had to we learn along this, like, with them. Not, yes. So we can kind of exist in this bizarre period of time where we know what it's like to have the internet, but it not be everywhere. And also now know what it's like to have it everywhere. And we saw it change and we can see the people that are younger than us changing as opposed to who we are and the people that are a little older than us. So I don't know. I, I, I love this societal uh, change that's happening. It's very cool to look at and notice. I guess like with the with the early 2000s, I, I'm just thinking of this because it kind of shoots back to this special cameo in the film. So if any listeners have not seen the film, which I hope you have, <laughs> um, you might want to take a look. It's just, it, it's this random cameo since Nancy is in the L.A. universe and they're shooting a Hollywood film. She accidentally gets whisked onto set to do a scene, and Bruce Willis is there. And I just thought um, Bruce was did that uh, did that movie, The Rugrats Go Wild. Do you remember that one? He was the voice of Spike. <laughs> yeah, I, yes. <laughs> so I I'm love wondering that if movie. I know me too, and I'm wondering if that was one of the reasons he did Nancy Drew because his kids were, you know, children at the time, but they could have seen those types of movies. Like, did you ever talk to him? Because I know you did the scene with him. You were there on set. Was there any discussion as to where in the world that scene came from and why he wanted to do it? Well, no. So I didn't. I met him very briefly because I was in the scene prior. I think I get split up from Nancy. No, no, no. She goes out by herself. No, I'm there. I don't know. I don't remember. But I uh, met him. I know that I met him, and he was very sweet, but I didn't really talk to him much about any of that. I, my my guess is that he did it. That's probably part of it. I, I wish I had more information on that. <laughs> it was a, it was a good him. cameo, though, because I was like, you, you, as a kid, I wasn't expecting that, but I really didn't <laughs> know who he was. But, you know, the parents do, so that works well for them because they're like, oh, I know who that is, and Bruce is playing himself, which is pretty funny. So watching it again today, I was like, oh, that is kind of funny. And he, yeah. and he takes it seriously. Like, he doesn't play around with the role. He he actually is in that universe, and he he has respect for Nancy, and I thought that was so cool. <laughs> There's a couple of great cameos for any, any acting buffs or film buffs that uh, would have recognized Adam Goldberg as well. He was the director in that scene. Yes. And he's a fantastic character actor and uh, <laughs> just actor in general. He's He's fantastic. And he was the director in that scene. And then Chris Kattan was in the beginning of the movie. And like another cameo you might want to mention is the next door neighbor, Pat Carroll, who was the voice of Ursula in The Little yes. Mermaid. Yeah. Wow. I totally forgot about that. She was, she was wonderful. I met her. I got to meet her. And she was uh, very sweet. I don't remember much, but I just remember her being like very, very sweet. And, and I had no idea. And then my mom told me. My mom was the one who was like, that's the voice of Ursula. And I was like, oh, no way. <laughs> I, was, I was like, that's so cool. She's uh, so funny in it. I like the, yeah. I love that last scene where Nancy's almost been killed and um, 
uh, Marshall Bell comes out and hits the bad guy on the head with the shovel. And then everybody, it's just like a whole, everybody comes in, all the characters. Everybody. And yeah. nobody's really caring that he's on the floor and that all this crazy stuff has already happened. And Pat Carroll comes in and it made me laugh so hard. Because <laughs> it, it works because of the yeah. chemistry between you guys, between everybody. And it's just funny. <laughs> I remember filming that scene pretty vividly. I, I just remember like that room in the studio. Uh, oh no, sorry. That was not in the studio. That was in the actual house. Oh God. Now I'm mixing it up. I thought I remembered it vividly because there was, there was the studio lot. We filmed a lot on the Warner brothers studio um, where they built a lot of the set, but then there was a house that we actually filmed at. That was this beautiful, like the house that, um, uh, remember the the scene with the 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 bad guy with the with the discolored eye? Uh, he's got the two different colored eyes. Like parks in front of the house, and looks at it. Um, yeah. That that was an actual house that we filmed in, uh, where we went up the stairs and the party scene was in that house. Wow, um, I didn't know yeah. that. I think. Oh God, am I now? There's definitely someone who's like knows it better than me. That's gonna be like, he's getting all of this wrong, and he doesn't know what he's talking about. But <laughs> it's I remember, okay. It's what you yeah, remember, I, so yeah, I'll, I'll I take was, your well, word for it. I don't know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I believe that I know there was the house, and there was also the set, and I think that we filmed that because there was this beautiful spiral staircase that uh, would go up when you would walk into the left. That Nancy comes walking down during the party scene. What about the vintage car that Emma got to drive during the film? Right. So that car was awesome. Uh, she was 15 at the time. And the only reason I know her age specifically is because she didn't have her license because you had to be 16 to have your license in LA. So all the driving scenes were done with her, with the car on a bed behind a truck. And they could have done it where the car was just driving behind the truck, but because she couldn't legally drive the car by herself, there needed to be an adult, because she had a permit, there needed to be an adult present, and Max was like 17, and it didn't count. Um, they had to put the car on a bed behind uh, the truck. Um, and so it was cool because you felt a lot safer because like no one was actually driving it. But that thing, I remember that thing really well. It was so cool. It was like baby blue, right? It was a beautiful baby blue. I was like, is yeah. this the legitimate thing? Did they rent that car? Like, was the owner of the real car there and know. present for it? I don't, re I don't know. I, th I believe they probably rented it. Or you know what it is? So Warner Brothers, I would assume, because Warner Brothers produced it, has so much money and, and they have so many old props and cars and things that they probably already own from the, you know, they've been around since the early 1900s or, or 1920s or thirties. Um, they probably have like a, like storage of cars and, uh, outfits and things that they've amassed over the years. And they probably already, to be completely honest, they probably already own that car. Uh, and they just use it whenever they would need to. But I, I have no idea. I just remember it being the coolest thing. And then we did that. I remember getting to sit in it for a while when there were, we were doing the uh, the painting scene where Emma's painting us, where it's me and Max, and we're doing the um, we're reenacting the crossing of the Delaware. Uh, it's like a very quick shot. I think it's in uh, a montage or something. But I remember we were sitting in there for a while, and I had like the raccoon skin hat on, and uh, it was just it was just so much fun. Yeah, and yeah. then you did a you did some voiceover for Horton Hears a Who, and yeah, some of the... I was the baby kangaroo in Horton Hears a Who. I, I saved the day. If you haven't seen it by now, and I ruined it for you, that's your fault. <laughs> you should see that movie by now. It came out like two thousand and nine. Yes, I I remember seeing that in the movie theaters too. Love yeah. that the buddy films, like the little dog movies. Yeah, everybody's I... space buddies, snow buddies. Uh, We've all seen of all those. of them for babysitting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like, yeah. if I babysat some kids, they always had those copies. So, you know, we would watch them and the kids loved them. And I thought they were really cute. So, you know, you did you did a lot of work. So you're so you're currently making you're still making films. And you also the way we got in touch was actually through Instagram. So why don't you tell us a little bit more about your social media pages and anything else you'd like to promote? Sure. Uh, I'm on I'm on Instagram at Flitstagram because uh, my last name is Flitter and it's uh, F-L-I-T-stagram. So Flitstagram. Uh, and then uh, 
Uh, and I post a lot of fun stuff on there. I'll post a lot of throwback pictures. On Thursdays, I uh, will typically throw back or post a picture of like a throwback. Uh, and I post a lot of sketch stuff on there too. Um, and I'm on Twitter at Flitter, which is just my last name, which is really convenient. Um, and I live in New York City now. And as well as writing and directing uh, short films and hopefully uh, features and stuff, I have uh, an improv group that I perform with at the People's Improv Theater all the time called Manic Attack Variety Hour. It's an improvised variety show where we have music, we have sketch, we have a ton of improv games that are like whose line is it anyway style. Um, so that's really fun. If you live in New York City and you want to come out, uh, you could look for that. I post that on Instagram all the time. And we have another show coming up in September, I think the first weekend of September. So, um, yeah, I, I'm doing improv all the time at the pit in New York City and getting a lot of stage experience. And, and I think that's really uh, helped my acting ability and, and especially comedy. So it's a blast and you should come check it out. My last question for you before sure. we end is if you could describe your experience of being a part of the Nancy Drew universe with one word, what would it be? Ooh, um, nostalgic. 